Hi, I'm Mr. Gale, and in this Core Maths video, we're going to look at savings and the annual equivalent rate, also called the AER. So first up, let's think about how often your interest gets paid. Now, it would have been fairly common for this sorts of things to be worked out annually quite a long time ago, um, but it's really not that common anymore. In fact, it's far more regularly that they're paid monthly or even interest is worked out daily so that if you pay money in or take money out, then that's reflected much sooner than just waiting until the end of the year. Let's have a look at some examples and we think about a 5% nominal annual interest rate on a thousand pound investment. And if we just calculated that annually, fairly obviously you would do, well, you can just find 5% of a thousand and that will do it. Or you can use the sort of compound interest formula like that, but it's 50 pound anyway. What about though, if it's biannually? biannually annoyingly can mean every two years or every twice a year um, we'll take it as twice a year then in, instead of paying that five percent twice a year that's not how it works it's five percent is divided by two to get 2.5 which is a decimal is 0 0.025 that's the multiplier we're using it's being done twice so we get an index of two and you do this calculation here instead now what about for quarterly, monthly, and daily? Now, if you like, you could pause here, have a think about what the calculation would be and see what your answers are, and then come back once you're done. All right, so if it's quarterly, that 5% gets divided by four, which is uh, this one here, 5% divided by four, and then divided by 100 to get it as a decimal, added onto the one, compounded four times is what would happen there. If it's monthly, then it's the 5% divided by 12, and then divided by 100 to get it as a decimal. That number there, that's probably rounded, I'd imagine. And this one, daily, well, that 5% gets divided by 365. And you might be wondering about leap years and stuff like that. And yes, that is a thing, but we'll probably just go with 365. Um, some of these sorts of calculations go with 365.25 because each year has 365 and a quarter days, pretty much. That's why you get leap years every four years. But we'll just stick with 365. Uh, again, that number has been rounded, but it's going to be to the power of 365 because it's going to be done every day. Let's see what those answers are. Well, quarterly, you get an extra little bit. If it was done monthly, a tiny bit more. And daily, well, extra 7p for that one but you know it all adds up so it turns out i would suggest that just saying it's a five percent nominal interest rate doesn't really give you the whole picture and it's very hard to compare these nominal interest rates when the compounding periods are different so it would be nice well what what would be the equivalent rate if instead of being compounded at different lengths of time, what, what would be the equivalent if somebody was just paying it annually? And well, that's called the AER, the annual equivalent rate. Uh, sorry. Annual equivalent rate. This is if those compounding periods are worked out and the the nominal interest rate is divided by those compounded periods and the calculation is done. And at the end, you then go, well, what, what actual interest rate have I got each year? What would be the equivalent of it just being paid once annually? So the annual equivalent rate. Okay, uh, just before we quickly get onto that uh, short thing, just remember that to calculate a percentage change, you look at, well, how much did it change by? Divide that by what the original amount was, and then you multiply by 100. OK, that will come up soon. So let's go back to those ones then. So the quarterly one, the monthly one, and the daily one, there's the amounts of money that we got each time. And quarterly then, so, well, how much did it change by? Well, we invested 1,000, so it's gone up by 50 pounds and 95 pence, 50.95, divided by the original amount, 1,000 multiplying by 100 to convert to percentage, and that's 5.095. If we do the monthly one, very similar calculation, but this changed by 51.20, which is this. And the uh, the daily one, 
So 51.27 divided by 1,000 times 100 is uh, 5.127. And those values down there, those are the AERs. So a 5% nominal interest rate, if it's being paid quarterly, the equivalent annual rate or the annual equivalent rate is 5.095. You do get a tiny bit extra. If it's being paid monthly, 5.12% would be annual equivalent rate. And a daily compounded nominal interest rate of 5% actually works out as 5.127% AER. These little fractions of a percent are enough to make a difference, especially on long-term loans and savings. Here's another example. Ugh, oh, I'll have to ignore that. That comes up later. So £4,590 is invested in an account paying a nominal annual interest rate of 3.4%. And the payments are made bi-monthly to every other month. What's the AER? So bi-monthly every other month. So six times a year, every two months, if you like. Here's that calculation then. So the 4590 the nominal interest rate is 3.4, but it's being paid six times over the year. So we've got to share that out between the six times, divided by 100 to get the uh, decimal equivalent. And then the, the compounding periods, well, there's six of them. It's being done six times over the year. That works out as £4,748.29 pence at the end of the year. And, well, let's just do that percentage change calculation again. So we've ended up with that much. It's not so easy to see how much has gone up by now. So I've done the £4,748.29 take off the original amount to work out how much it changed by, divided by the original amount, and then times 100, which is 3.449%. So nominal interest rate of 3.4% and AER of 3.449. One thing I just want to mention quickly is that in here, it doesn't tell you how many years the loan is being taken out for or how many periods it's being taken out for. And that doesn't matter. To calculate an annual equivalent rate, we're just working out, well, how much is the equivalent being paid per year? So it doesn't matter if this gets taken out for two years or 10 years, or even just for four months, then that savings is still, a, still works out as an annual equivalent rate of 3.449%. Now you'll see here, I've got a suggestion for an alternative method. Now, the 4,590 is actually irrelevant. It doesn't matter how much you invest, the annual equivalent rate is still the same. So you can get that by just looking at what the multiplier was doing. So the, the one plus the nominal rate over the number of compounding periods divided by 100 to the power of the number of compounding periods. Now that actually comes out as 1.0344853 and there's quite a lot more numbers there. Now you don't see that number because we probably typed it all in in one go over here. But that number there, if you compare it to this one over here, those are very, very, very similar. The only difference is, is that this has got the extra one on it in the first place that we started with, the original investment, if you will. Um, and it's not as a, as a percentage, sorry. So we can take off that one to get the 0 0.3449, 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.0349, which if you multiply it by 100 to get it as a decimal, you're back to the AER we had before because it's a different way of doing the same thing. At the risk of overloading you slightly, there is this version of the formula as well. So an annual equivalent interest rate, AER, can be done like this. I'll just go through that in a sec, but it's worth looking at this line down the bottom here, the note that the values of the I for the nominal interest rate and R, the AER, are being expressed as decimals here. So we're not writing them as their percentage form, we're just going straight to converting them to decimals first for the interest rate in particular. And it says that the AER is equal to one plus the interest rate divided by the compounding periods to the power of the compounding periods and then take off the one again. So let's have a quick look at a different one of those. 31,260 invested in an account paying a nominal annual interest rate of 1.2% with payments being made monthly. What's the AER? So that's the formula we're using. The 
AER formula. You don't have to use this formula. You can work it through like we did before. If you're comfortable doing that, then that's OK. This is the shortest and quickest method, though. So we need a couple of things here. We're trying to work out R, the AER, so we don't know that. But we do know that N, that's the easy one, how many compounding periods are there over the year? Well, it's being paid monthly, so there'll be 12 of those. The I, so the interest rate of 1.2%, and remember, it needs to be expressed as a decimal. 1.2% is 0.012 as a decimal. Then you can just chuck it into the formula, replace the I with 0.012, replace both of the Ns with 12 for this one, type that in, careful with brackets, make sure that's an index power, and then you get this number here. So R is 0.012066, and remember that's as a decimal, so, you, so 0.0121, you might prefer to write that as 1.21%. I multiplied by 100 to get that. So 1.2% nominal interest rate being paid monthly, and I know it's not much different, but 1.21%, that extra 0.01% can really build up and make a difference. Right, if you're a teacher, there are ways that you can find more resources. You might like to check out my TS resources on searching for core math level three. And you might like to follow me on Twitter as well, at Reflective Maths.